beep, 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 A Radio Step Zero broadcast. It's raining out at the nest here. It's dark. It's kind of cold. It's not too cold. 40 degrees or so. Perfect night for sketching. Perfect night for uh, getting into some little topics and just kind of relaxing. Because that's what, you know, that's the aim, right? To relax. Sit and just relax and draw. So that's what we're going to do. Let's get a little bit of uh, generic music in here. Quiet. So quiet. As you can see, People in replay land. Uh, the uh, prompt for right now is snow. Suggested by Piper. No, I'm not talking about the uh, halfway obscure rapper from the 90s with his one hit informer. For those of you that remember that song. No, no, no. No, I'm talking about just good old snow that's going to be here any any week now up in the up in the north. Um. I kind of like winter myself. My wife, not such a big fan. Of course, she's a runner, so she, you know she's not going to love running in that miserable stuff. But I always like the looks and the quiet, the peace it brings. Uh, you know, you go outside and you just you, you hear quiet. You know, it's, it's very peaceful, uh, and it makes me feel a little bit more um, thankful for what I've got. You know, when you when you're inside a house and you know, or an apartment, but I mean, in my case, a house. Um, and you know it's, it's a warm house and it's, it's 20 below zero outside I, I feel like you can really uh appreciate your surroundings a lot more if um if you know when it's winter not to say i don't appreciate it all the time but but uh, i think i don't know ever since i was a little kid i've always just gotten this this absolute feeling of of thankfulness in the winter when it rains all right when it rains when it snows so um so that's that's what's going on very soon here however what's going on right now is is the stage is set as the as the uh title suggests um The awards are done. I mean, not done, but I mean, the nominations are in and it's looking like it's going to be a great show. I'm excited for it. I don't know about you, but but I, I certainly am. Um, no, I don't like that. Um, I, uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to seeing who the winners are. I know there are some people out there that are uh, kind of sad or annoyed or upset that they were snubbed. Sorry about that. It was a hundred percent in the chat. <laughs> I say, you know, the chat, but I mean, like, yes, we had we had our uh, nominations too, but you can't really get everybody. I mean, there were twenty nominations, and next year, you know, we'll maybe maybe everything will be different. I'm not going to be one of those people to say. Go make your own award show. That's fine. I mean, you can. Absolutely. I'd love to see it. I'd be there. I'd probably be there voting. But, uh, but you know, it's... Gosh, it's just a bit of fun. Eric the Guapa, welcome, welcome to the nest. He's looking forward to it, too. I know. I know. We're both looking forward to it. Looking forward to seeing who wins, who loses, who got... not. Well, we got to see who got nominated. And now it's like Highlander, right? There can only be one per category. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited about that. This last year I was, was the first year I, I paid, not paid attention to it, but, uh, was kind of involved 
and it was fun but i i think this year this year it seems to be kind of a bigger a bigger world in terms of comic books and um I'm really, really excited to to just kind of see where everybody lands. I hope a lot of people come in and join and watch and talk. I mean, you know, it, it, it's. I suppose there's there might be the attitude of like, you know, if I'm not nominated, why would I watch? But you know, it's it's an overall CG thing. I think for the health of the, it's it's a nice way to gauge the health of the CG thing based on how active these things are. I mean, we've already gotten tons of different nominations for uh, Michael DJ. Welcome, welcome to the nest. Looks like a good field. I uh, enjoy casting my vote and seeing the result. Yeah, you know, it's, it's like my grandpa when he played yachts. He just like to roll and see what he got. I'm just really, really curious to see who wins uh, this year. Uh, I mean, according to that deep bat, you know, it was. Uh, you know, there were some people that felt, you know, they get snubbed. They get snubbed last year. They get snubbed. Um, and for that, I, I really, I, you know, I don't know what to say. Um, aside from like, you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> the chat, you know, this year they they gravitated to, uh, to different things, and we're kind of seeing what they are. And I think that. Some of the bigger guys that got snubbed, and this is, I say snubbed, this is my personal opinion. It's maybe that their shows, some of them drifted a bit way away from comics. And the comic book reader type people from the chat, and that's, you know, I'm talking about the uh, the uh, the actual chat, not the not the panel chat. But I mean, you know, a lot of the people in the in that particular chat are, you know, avid book readers, comic book readers. And so when you know your show drifts away from comic book stuff, more into pop culture, similar to like say the uh, the Friday Friday Night Tights or Geeks and Gamers or or uh, what Simcast. That's another one. Um, you know, I think you tend to lose comic book readers a little bit. Stippling Vaughn, welcome to the nest. Welcome, good to see you. Um, and so I think I think most of these shows that I saw that you know, I mean, the shows and the creators that I saw that were getting in there, I feel like were a little bit more kind of in tuned in um, in uh, comic books. You know, like like their shows focus a little bit more around comics and uh and they're not really like talking pop culture as much so i mean that's my theory right that's what i think it's it's not a jab at anybody it's not because i mean obviously there's quite a few people in comics gate that are are here for the pop culture stuff you know that's when you when you say hey um it's not all about comics you know that's that's those people they're there for they're there for for like that you know pop culture <laughs> and and you know they'll they'll pick up a comic or two um, while they're at it um, which you know i mean and then of course when you're doing a comic and you're not nominated for let's face it Anybody that does, you know, would do a comic book award show. If you got, like, say, some of the biggest people together and they put on a, a real honest-to-goodness award show with, like, lots of research, research, it takes months to get it right, months to lock everything down, eventually it probably would become just like the Eisners in that, um, you know, they, they would be favoring people, you know, different different people, different things, Um because that's that's kind of what they complained about with the Eisners, um, and as far as this one goes, you know, it was it's it's always been billed as kind of just for fun. You know, I mean, I'm I'm shocked that that there's uh, there's even certificates, but you can get an award, which is really cool. Um, but then you know, just seeing online the amount of people that are kind of annoyed or angry, you know, it's 
it's kind of sad to see. Not sad as in like, well, that's sad. <laughs> but I mean, you know, it's, it's it, I just don't think that there will ever be like a a uh, perfect event where everybody can really get around and have a lot of fun. I think this is probably the best you can do, especially since it's more fan oriented. Um, you don't really have any or met much in the way of creators contributing to this, which I mean, it's a good thing, I, I, I would think. Because this is the fans saying, you know, hey, this is this is what caught our attention this year. Stickling Vaughn says, my printer works hard to print them off. Face blue smiling. <laughs> yeah, and, and I, I saw the uh, the certificates, and those those things are great. Uh, that picture you drew of, of Vanessa Vaughn, it, it makes me laugh every time I see it. Like, that's a... <laughs> That is very much like in the spirit of what it is. Just a heck of a lot of fun. So I'm really excited about, uh, you know, people get that. It's a bit of a different landscape from last year. And I'm excited about that. Michael DJ says, people like what they like for their own reason. And your taste can change too. That's right. I mean, look at, you know, this year from last year. What originally brought you in may fade to something else over time. Mm-hmm. It's no joke. I um, speaking of that, I saw just a little tiny bit of some clip of. Uh, I suppose we'll get analytical for some, you know, in some drama for a minute, not taking sides. But I saw this clip of uh, what heel versus baby versus baby face. That guy came around uh, a little bit later than uh, I did when I was watching. Like uh, I watched a little bit of Nerdrotic. Uh, I watched a little Geeks and Gamers before I really got into CG. And we're talking precious little. More Geeks and Gamers than Nerdrotic. Um, I didn't really know who Heel versus Babyface is. So he he calls... Out, I think I first really heard about him when Ethan called a bunch of them zeros and stuff. And they, they, got, to, uh, they got together and got angry about that. But... Um, so I see this this deal here where he says something back at Ethan, and then Ethan's got to efap that. And I, for the life of me, I'm trying to figure out where this is going. Like you know, it's it's like when you're watching a show, and it's like you're not a hundred percent sure where the story is headed. Uh, that's that's what I'm looking at today. Um, in terms of in terms of what's what's going on here i stopped watching a lot of the phantom fandom menace stuff because it really did become you know sort of a let's just yell about what we're watching on screen i mean you know, what disney's doing what warner brothers is doing and i already either didn't like disney what disney or what warner brothers was doing or i wasn't paying attention and that was something that i didn't really you know, it was, it's kind of like what Comicsgate does with the mainstream. You know, they start covering the, uh, you know, what the, the fails and what this, this sucky issue looks like and whatnot. Well, I left the mainstream stuff because of those type of issues. Well, honestly, when I left, the, the, the art was quite a bit better, but the writing was still just as kind of like, mm, not for me. Um, but I, I left because I didn't care. And so now, you know, like getting into all these articles about how much they suck is is uh it's pointless it's it's counterproductive eric the guapo says the drama between as and ethan started years ago so the only time that i remember it was i mean like the only time that i was aware of it was the zeros comment which i guess must have been one or two years ago if there's something before that i have no idea um but uh every time i watched heel versus baby face you know, he was just, it was just like, this stuff is shit. And, ah, hey, this stuff, you know. And, and, um, oh, yeah. Yep. So it was, that was where it grew from it. Ethan said it as a neurotic streamer with zeros. Yep. So, that, I mean, no, that was, that was a while ago. And I think at that time I wasn't really watching, uh, any of that stuff anyways when i started watching gary he was actually he had some positive points to him but then then there was like a, a couple of months where i'd watch and it was all just 
it was I think it was probably around the time he create he uh, he coined MCU. It just got to be too much for me. And I I was kind of wondering what he was up to at one point and I think it was I don't remember what what uh, movie it was for but he gets in his car and he says he says oh yeah um i was gonna tell you something uh what was it um oh yeah mcu and then i was like all right i'm out <laughs> so uh i mean you know, i used to watch uh, jeremy at geeks and gamers i think i might have actually watched him before i, I found any of the comic skate stuff because it went like anna i random her random big Star Wars review, her Last Jedi review popped up as it was everywhere, I, should, I suppose. Then Jeremy, uh, Jeremy, and the funny thing about Jeremy, I noticed, and, and you guys might not notice this, I don't know. Um, <laughs> he, he sounds like um, like the Reverend sometimes from The Simpsons. He puts. An A H at the end of his A or an A A H at the end of some of his words. You know what I'm talking about? Where it's like, so we're going into uh, the gaming season, and Kathleen Kennedy is screwing up Star Wars. <laughs> and he sounds like a telepreacher sometimes. I don't know what it is when he gets into his rants and he puts the A H's on there. It just it was like kind of funny to me. Um, Michael DJ says it's hard to stay angry all the time, even if I agree with the basic premise. At some point, it's just okay that you made your point onto something new for me. And that, I think, was why I, I stopped watching because, you know, these are live streams. These are uh, live streams that, that feel like reruns. And I... Um, I um, was getting tired of that. And sometimes with some not all but some of the cg shows for a little while when i was talking about last time about how i was gonna you know i was thinking about walking away um that's how it felt it was like this is a live show but i feel as if i am watching a rerun um sibling bond says thank you everyone for tuning in the show is starting to look like a production meeting for <laughs> next week <laughs> Yeah, a little bit. Thank you, guys. Oh, Dirty Fatty, welcome to the nest. I have no more respect for anyone who does the EFAP clapback. That sounds like a dance. Ooh, my microphone was up by my head, so I, if I sounded weird, that's where it was from. That sounds like a TikTok dance that the that the, that the kids are doing. All right, everybody. Do you want to help the latest cause? Do the EFAP clapback. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, th I think it's it's like you know, when you get a a big topic, it's it's interesting to hear what different commentators, I guess you'd call them in this case, are saying. Unless they are all on the exact same page, and you can watch one video, and the rest of them sound, uh, you know, pretty much the same thing. Uh, sometimes you get slightly different perspectives. And other times, well, you you just it's the same points kind of reiterated and reinforced. And then they get on stream together and they, you know, they just kind of say the same stuff. Not that I don't agree with it sometimes, but at the same time, it's like, you know, um, this was covered. This is well trodden ground. And from an entertainment aspect, that is it's not engaging for me personally. Um, and that's, you know, that used to be what it was for. It was for entertainment coming in here and, and stuff. But I mean, in terms of comic book talk with some of the bigger guys in the current situation, I mean, they really can, they can talk about what they think. And I mean, you know, we all know what they think because they're here. They don't like it. I, I can't think of the last time. There was compliments given to some sort of a book. Um, but, I mean, you know, I can't think of the last time I really looked into a new book. I couldn't tell you who the... Uh, I guess the only people I can tell you are the ones that, you know, everybody's hating at the moment or something like that. And even then, I don't even know if they're still working. Some of them in Daniel K Kittlesmith. I have no clue if that dude's still even working. 
especially after that um <clears throat> that new warriors craziness but um but you know there were a lot of videos made on him at that point um but no you yeah, old dirty fatty you'll be happy to hear this uh there won't be any efaps on this channel not at all that'll i can unless it's a joke and it's something that the other person may be in the joke in the joke uh it's never gonna happen on this channel um it's it's i i think I've probably settled into this being a little bit more of a conversation channel, whether it's with you guys, the chat, or with, you know, a, a random guest that uh, that kind of pops up. It's not a news channel. It's not a conversation. I mean, or it's not a uh, kind of uh, hard-hitting opinions channel. <laughs> it's very much just, just a conversation channel. And sometimes, you know, we get into those, we get into talking about, some of that stuff that's going on and other times you know it's it's we've we've talked about tv what what books we're reading things like that i'm totally cool with that i mean that's that's sort of what you know it's it, it, I, i'm not probably not going to get into a lot of pop culture stuff if i'm honest because i don't know anything about it it's been a year where i mean you know even some of the comic books i haven't backed a ton this year which was the hardest thing about uh, nominating was that you know I had a bunch of books that I backed but I was kind of like I backed a ton and now I'm kind of waiting for them and I don't want to back a ton more so I'm just going like wait did this did this come out this year is this in the period or am I still waiting for this from the last year um, that happened a couple of times I'm, I'm ashamed to say but I think we got a, a solid roster a uh, solid list in the uh you know for the mentions um it should be a, a lot of fun that show we're gonna get to see geez was it 15 categories they figure four hours four hours of awards <laughs> but that's a, welcome to the nest good to see you thank goodness for the chat i agree because you know for the, my first i don't know how many shows uh, sometimes I'd have one or two people in here. Sometimes I wouldn't have any, but I always have to sit and think about the replay people. And there's absolutely no fun um, watching a replay when, you know, there's no talking. There's nothing to engage with. So I would sit and have to talk essentially to myself and try to try my best to get on a good Shane-like spiral and rattle that off for an hour. It wasn't always easy. It's gotten a little easier than you guys come on in and and say hello but um but yeah very much chat's a lifesaver makes this a lot easier <laughs> um as far as the awards go though i uh that second you know this the second episode i was almost bracing for impact because i kind of wondered if after that efap you know there was going to be fights in the chat there were going to be there was going to be like uh you know different stuff but it, to my to my delight to my happiness uh i thought it went really well i thought it went really well um <laughs> don't dirty fatty said i felt a real responsibility to vote saturday well, i'm glad i'm glad you you were there um i'm i'm glad everybody was there we had i think even though there were some really big freaking streams going on ethan had that auction pete had that auction there were a couple of other uh, kind of just various shows happening um we still maintained like a 38 to 45 person for through most of it you know it was getting a little it's starting to peter out a little bit it's, it kind of dropped to 30 or for the last 45 minutes or whatever but um i still think we we you know we did all right and here's hoping like when uh award time comes up we'll uh we'll have plenty of people in there so that it's not just like a, oh that one fandom came together and honored their one <laughs> their one or two creators that's what i'm hoping but uh yeah i mean you never you never know how many people will show up on the day even so you know if, if that if that is in fact just an award show given by that chat for the people that that chat feels is is uh is worthy of it 
I'm cool with that. I, d I don't think it was ever meant to be like an entirely wide, everyone needs to participate CG situation. You know, like, like I said, if that were the case, the biggest fandoms would win. This is by that chat that's regularly there. Who are they liking this year? Who, you know, and I, I wholeheartedly support that. Stippling Vaughn says, that snowflake between the eyes looks like a nose. Good looking out. No, kind of right. There we go. Yeah, let's let's make that beautiful face. If don't old dirty says. Oh, he must have been. He must have <laughs> accidentally hit enter. Um, but uh, yeah, I I don't, I don't see a problem with that. Like, as a matter of fact, when people are you know getting angry on streams that they got snubbed or their people didn't get you know like uh, nominated. I think even that's a good thing because they are talking about their favorites. They're talking about the people they thought should be nominated, which is something this freaking corner of comics needs a whole lot more of. You know? It's my opinion. And this has done more to do that than, than you know, anything. I, I saw that... That... Uh, that thing about, like, as was talking about, if someone asked you, what's your favorite book... Or what's your favorite part of the book? Just shut them down. You know, that's trolling kind of thing. Um, I thought that was silly. Like, that's been like a, a nerd thing for a long time. Hey, what'd you like about the book? What'd you think of the art? What, you know, what was your favorite part? And then this other geek would be like, oh man, my favorite part was the part, the splash page. Did you see that splash page? Oh, that was pretty friggin' sweet. <laughs> Vanessa says, "If uh, I like that Janet Jackson song. Eric agrees. Uh, oh, Dirty Fatty says, if Piper made that suggestion, where is she? Uh, that's, I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, you know, uh, I got random times. So, I mean, like, she'll probably catch, she'll probably catch the, uh, the replay. Or, or she'll, you know, maybe see this when I post it on, on uh, Twitter. That's fine. Um. We'll surprise her. How about that? <laughs> um, besides, I don't really tell what's what's coming up until you know show starts. So she, she didn't really have much notice. <laughs> um, but uh, oh yeah, so so yeah, the whole thing was like I guess people are trolling as with like the whole did you read I some trying to bait him into something. Um, and I and I oh, I found that to be unbelievably weird. Where is Piper? Who is Piper? What is Piper? These are all questions that could be answered uh, on the CGopedia. Someone create that, please. Eric the Guapo says, "Isom is an incredibly average book, but I do enjoy it because the concepts are solid." I hope Ripa improves as he continues writing, and he is publishing regularly. Yeah, speaking of which, he's got another book. Um, launching tomorrow. Um, so that's going to be the uh, the uh, Alpha Core with Chuck Dixon. Um, all right. A lot of people excited about that one because Chuck's got a lot of fans. A river to his people he is. I prefer Black Cat myself, says so Stippling Vaughn. Hmm. Um, Yeah, so I mean, hey, Marcus Killiger, welcome to the nest. Well, take it or leave. I mean, you know, like I, you know, another nice thing about uh, July's stuff. Take it or leave it. If it's boring, if it sucks, if it's great, uh, he is getting people talking about comics. You know what? What sucks about it? <laughs> what doesn't suck about it? Is it good? Is it worth picking up? Um, that is a good thing, regardless of of uh, of. Um, You've got actual discord. You've got actual talking that I'm seeing. You know, it's it's not just like you suck. No, you suck. It's it's uh, that I'm seeing there. There's honest discussion about defending or or criticizing the book. Marcus Kilger says I'm fine with Ripa, but thirty five dollars shipping is a lot. Is that just for the book? Can't be just for the book. Tell me that's not just for the book. Because that is a lot. 
All right. Another layer. We'll do a little. Maybe that's a little bit. I want a little darker. There we go. Um, yeah. I, wow, thirty-five bucks is just for the book. My goodness, that's like some that's like some luxury comics right there. I know it's it's uh, what is it? He's he's writing them thicker. But uh, hey, a line, welcome, welcome to the nest. And, and Guapo says, and I pay it. Good, good man. Um, but yeah, I, I think that for the first time in a while. The thing that I'm most enjoying is people are actually talking about the books and not the creators that make them. Um, you know, and I and I do think what was your favorite book? That is, or what was your favorite part? Well, that is, you know, that's grounds to talk about it. I if if they're using it as a gotcha, I think that's really stupid. Um, and for the people that don't feel like, you know, answering because it is a gotcha <laughs> or something like that, let's. Well, that's kind of silly too. Like, this is your chance to get people excited about comic books. This is your your chance to 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 uh, you know broadcast it out there. Don't screw it up. You know, I I've seen more comments on those things about like good job just sitting there arguing and swallowing you know each other alive when you could be promoting books. I agree with that. Oh, Marcus Kilger says, his wife lost, lost job a few weeks ago. It's really hard to back. I feel you, man. Um, oh, and yeah, and his comics are over 90 pages. That's true. I feel you. I, I, I have been cutting back myself uh, on backing. Some due to interest and some due to like trying to make sure the uh, funds are right where they need to be. Guapo says, I do hope they lower the price, and maybe they will with subsequent print printings. I wish there was a lower quality, uh, paper quality stock to choose from because I'm getting tired of the collector stuff. Yeah, how is it? Like thick, glossy pages? Kind of like your um, your uh, graphic novels and stuff like that? <laughs> uh, Michael DJ says, it's incredibly hard to turn an idea into a product for sale, even if it's not for me. I, want, I won't hack on somebody who gets in the arena and succeeds. You know what? Here's the thing. Uh, I want to see, even if, you know, it's not necessarily like something I want to read right now. I want to see July succeed. I really do because him succeeding, you know, even if the book's not for you, him succeeding is going to give other people like, you know, like, wow, somebody did it. Like, a, I can maybe do this. You know, it, it gives hope. And, you know. I, I hope that people that are buying either are comic book fa uh, fans or are becoming comic book fans. Cause if it really is just about supporting July and I did see a comment about like, we gave you money because we thought you were going to change the system. You know, that to me suggests that that person wasn't, you know, going for comic books and, um, to change the system. I, I mean, that's, there are things that need to be overhauled. Nobody's denying that, but, but, um, you know, buy them cause you want to read them Buy it cause you want to talk about them. Talking about comics used to be the other half of the fandom, not arguing about it, but I mean, really discussing it. Like at least from my experience, you buy the books, you read the books and then you talk to people, whether it's, you know, monthlies, you're like one, I, I bet this is going to happen. I wonder what's going to happen next. Or uh, I don't like this character. I wish this was this was different. You know, like in a way that where you don't turn to the other person and say, what are you talking about? This character sucks and I hate you. You know, like didn't used to be like that. It shouldn't be like that. It could be different again. Ooh, a salute to that. Um, Guapo says, I've been backing less and less, adding more to my pull list in my local comic book shop. I've been hearing that like some of the... Uh, "Quote unquote corporate indie guys have been doing some decent stuff like Dark Horse and uh, Image and you know little things like that, if not just reprints." Uh, Marcus Killigrew says there are only comics; uh, they are the these are the only comics I get at this point. And Guapo says, "Yes, talking comics is a huge part of the fun. They used to be." Marcus Killigrew says, "The problem is that people buy these books and they don't read them. That is, and Rippy Rippa has that issue, and so far." Uh, so do CG create. That's right. And I've been talking about that before. Like, I just, I don't really understand where it's coming from. 
You know, I mean, that's you can attack the problem if you kind of know what's happening. But right now, I, I don't know if anybody truly knows what's happening, whether it is for support reasons. You know what I mean? Like, like I'm just buying, you know, we'll just say Ethan's because he's got, uh, you know, I'm just buying his stuff because I, you know, I really like his show and I want to keep him around. Or is it like I bought it and I have some problems, but I don't want to be attacked by the fandom or I, I don't want uh, to cost him money because I don't really like it, but I want him to do really well, you know, or is it, is it simply just like a, like just that, you know, I love the book, but I don't really feel like doing a review. <laughs> You know, uh, Eric says talking about the art, talking about the characters, the story, making the theories. and spe Yes, exactly. Speculations. Yep. Danger Vanessa says, I agree with Eric. Talking about the comic is a part of being a comics fan. Deb's right. I think people lose interest in the book by the time they get it. That could be a problem, too. You know, that was supposed to be a problem. That was solved. <laughs> it should be solved by now, but it never really did. And, I, you know, I, I think... Part of it is we've gotten so comfortable. I mean, like, and I and I don't know if this is part of the. I'm going to use Mandy for example. I don't know if this is part of the uh, the plug-in or what, but she she put um, Super Dead Two, which I think is over two grand now, twenty five hundred. Good for her. She put that up on her her thing. It's like a crowd on her site is a crowdfunding thing, and she did like the five hundred dollar minimum. Uh, thing which usually I thought was used to kind of game the system in IgG um I kind of wonder why she you know even had to have a, a thing at all for that or you know just to say you know like once it gets this arbitrary number it's gonna get funded so here's five hundred dollars like I, that kind of was weird to me like that you would that that she would do that because you know it's gonna get printed probably no matter what but um but I think that's that just illustrates how comfortable we've gotten with the process. Twenty five dollars a book, uh, you know, five hundred dollar minimum thing so that it can get printed because that was the that was the you know the lowest on Indiegogo. Um, Marcus Kilger says I met two guys at Heroes Con that were CG and they buy every CG book, but. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, they buy to flip. No, I didn't mute myself. My uh, internet hiccuped a little bit. Uh, I uh, they buy to flip the uh, the books. There's a lot of collectors in in uh, CG, right? Uh, if you look at like the uh, the Little Black Riding Hood, I mean, those are very much collector prices. One hundred fifty dollars for a twenty page book, ten of which is the uh, the story, and then ten is like the uh, the black and white art. So there's a lot of catering to collectors. Um, uh, but yeah, to reiterate, Marcus Kilgore said, I met two guys at HeroCon that were CG. They buy every book, but they don't read them. They buy to support the culture war. That's a, I think that's a part part of a problem here. Um, I think by, by being genuine, this might be naive of me. Really, it could be. But by being genuine and truly pushing and making something you love popular with other people, isn't that fighting the culture war? Yeah, right now we've got we've got a lot of people saying like you know if you don't make a statement, bro, it's still a political statement. I don't buy that myself. You know, uh, it's uh, it's in, it's interesting. Michael Dice says I went to the Cherokee Nation Comic Con yesterday. Interesting. Are some exciting animation technology on display? Ooh, good panel discussions about publishing their works with tribal resources. Refreshing. Interesting. Cherokee Nation Con. I didn't know that one was. Cool. I think I muted myself. Lost the bird. Oh, no. Sibling Vaughn says, uh, it's hard to add to my pull list when the majority of all the artwork is crap. With the line weight of a ballpoint pen, no texture, nothing dynamic, artistically DC and Marvel have no identity. Well, that's, you know what, that's, I think... <laughs> Well, 
where's the bro voice on Saturday? <laughs> um, go back to that. It's around, Vanessa. Don't you worry about it. Um, I, I, you know, I think partially though, Vaughn, that's that's kind of a, a a trend in all artist circles right now. So many artists are just drawing for color. They're just doing one line weight, making basically a coloring book and throwing it over to the colorist and saying, "Get that done. Make that look pretty. Make that work." You know, it might be color, some colorists like that, you know, where, you, you know, you just put all the textures in there and they love going to town on that. And it might just be like, here you go, quick, it's done. The, and then the letter or the uh, colorist has to do the heavy lifting. Eric Guapo says, Image and Boom have a lot of great titles with uh, great art. Bob. Yeah. And Vanessa is wondering, oh, my God, where is this bro voice on Saturday? <laughs> Um, Marcus Killigrew says, I agree, Stippling. I watch Dennis Turner's quick flips and all the comics look like Netflix. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. And I think that's part of it too. Like trying to get those pitches. Uh, Eric Guapo says, Frank Miller has a good series called Ancient E, Enemy, or Ancient Enemies, uh, First Responders that has good art too. Never heard of it. I didn't even, you know, I didn't even know Frank Miller was really doing much aside from that business that he's got going on. You know what? I think I'm going to call this. I'm going to call this one done. Snow. we got two of them to do tonight, so don't worry, sports fans. Um, this next one's going to be a little harder, which is fine, because that means we have time to talk. I've got two and a half hours to spend, although I don't know if I'll be doing all of that tonight. But but hey, what the heck? Tomorrow, uh, it all resets back to 20, and we don't have to worry so much about, about uh, our time limit. So there we go. This is... Um, well, what is this? This is prompt number get into the prompt folder prompt number 32 snow by piper perfect what program am i using uh is that for me vaughn that's this is uh clip paint uh oh frank has a publishing company he isn't doing much art these days yeah well especially after that those covers he did that cause such a stir right uh marcus kilker says on a positive note we like that around here i saw the proofs for cordrath and it looked like it might be the best art in cg except for rocafort sweet i'm excited i i know I, like i said i've seen um andy smith back in the day he did uh, a book called claw the conqueror with chuck dixon or claw the unconquered um and I, I read that. That was a pretty good. That was a pretty good book. And let me see if I can just find like a cover here quick. For those of you that might not have seen it. Uh, here we go. So, and you know, Wildstorm back in the day. August. Does it say when it was? No, it doesn't say what, what year it was, but uh, I knew Andy was was good at this stuff. So, you know, just based on what I read here and, and what I experienced with this book, I knew Cordrath was going to be, you know, right on right on target with what they were doing. OK, so let me just uh, click the second banner up here. The prompt this time blanket fort suggested by our pal Amanda. So blanket fort. All right. Okay. So this is the one I should have done first. And this is the one I should have. Uh, oh yeah. I'm looking along your left side and it says you can make, yeah, sure. You can make balloons. Check this out. I'll give you a little quick demo. Let's get this big enough to read. Alan, this is a test. Ah, uh, okay. So we'll go into this here. It's real easy. Go in here, and then you sit and go. Bam! There's your word balloon. You want a tail on it? Let's get this balloon pen. I like using the blue. You can do the balloon tail, and it'll just marry it, right? Or you can go ahead and you can do this. All the everybody's speaking, 
and it'll just put it right under the, uh, the the drawing. So you know you can go back to art. Puts the balloon right over there on the separate layer. It's fantastic. I love this. Hey, Phil with two L's. How you doing, uh, Mr. Diaz? Welcome to the nest. Good to see you. Um, yeah, what were we talking about? Okay, so uh, Marcus Kilgrew said that he saw the proofs of Cordrath and it looks awesome. I'm excited about that. Yeah. Well, I gotta go back. I lost my train of thought. I was on a pretty good train of thought. <laughs> uh, it's hard to make a pull just list when all the uh well you know i mean that's that's yeah that's that's how they you know fill letters <laughs> um it's really easy I, I do my comic stuff there too but um but you know i think i think the art in cg when you started out you know there there was there were a few decent ones but you could tell a lot of these people um you could tell a lot of these people uh, it was their first book, their second book. But now, I mean, some of these guys got two, three, four books behind them. And, you know, if they're 45 to 80 to 100 page books, like that's that's uh, that's a couple hundred pages. You know, Jack Kirby, he says you got you got 100 bad pages in you. Get those out and then you can the real work can start start uh, beginning. Yeah. So it says, we missed you. We did, Eric. We missed you. In the chat. Stippling's mind is being blown all over his office right now. So I finally did it, chat. They all tried to get him by, by my, making him laugh. No, 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 no. That's not the way to do it. You just letter something right in front of him. It's over. <laughs> all right. Blanket for it. That's, uh, that's the one we're, we're doing here. So I just gotta, I gotta, I gotta make some. Gotta make some shapes here to kind of set the stage. This is, like I said, this is probably the one I should have. Um laid out first because this one's going to be a bit more complicated the snow one was pretty easy that one, that one was wasn't too dang hard to uh draw oh eric's uh heading out good night eric thanks for dropping by the nest good to see you marcus Kilger says he can hand letter and you know what i'm uh i'm obscenely jealous about that um I, it's, that's something i gotta i gotta sharpen my skills on michael dj says the roca fort uh, morning draw streams are addicting. Just a gentleman, genius, quietly creating for the camera. I know, right? I, they, they always told me. They always said draw streams aren't that fun. They're not popular. We don't do them because you know they they, they don't really perform well. And I, I guess maybe it's maybe it's just me. You know, like artists really love to to watch other artists work to see what their process is. And I think that that might be a situation where. You know, the artist would just prefer to take a look at how the artist works. Not so much sit and talk and ask questions. Because, you know, when you, when you know what you're doing, um, you, you don't really need... Uh, you don't need to ask other people how they did things. Uh, oh, <laughs> Stippling Vaughn says, Word balloons, comic book lettering, fonts, teach me more. Well, shoot. Here, I'll teach you all you need to know. One second. I'll just give you some trade secrets here. You'll love this. Uh, here we go. Let me just pull this down. Here we go. I don't know if you're familiar with this. Blambot, right? You can download a ton of fonts for free as long as you use them uh, in your independent thing. It's It can't be for a big company, but if you're doing it for like your little independent comic book, you can use these fonts... Um, for free otherwise or you can buy them some of them you have to buy like like uh what was it um the one i just was using was uh one of the few that i bought because i really liked it it was uh uh might makes right pro but yeah you can click on these things um anime ace isn't bad i really like uh what are some of my favorites i'll show you here i really like 
Oh, bloody murder. That seems new. I don't know that one. Blowhole. If that one's, I might have to get that one. That, that, that looks like a really great sound effect. Uh, one. Uh, I like daily strip. Might make right pro obviously is awesome, but uh, digital strip one and two are really good. I like digital strip two a lot. Um, but you can download these and you will just kind of have them as a kind of an archive of stuff to to use. You know, it could be like uh, the, the beginning of your story or something like that, or different different people using different imaginary friend. That's an interesting one. Regular italic bold. I gotta look at that one. I like that. Uh, Ink Slinger. They got a bunch of new ones in here since since I took a look last. Son of a gun. Yeah. But I mean, if you look at my fonts, I got I got a ton of them in my uh, in my little cabinet here. You know. So so yeah, I can I can do some lettering. Just saying. I saw the lettering on my on my Mythic American stories. Man, it was bad. <laughs> Full bleed. Danger, Vanessa says. Um, actually, you know what? I don't really like this. We're going to start with the figure drawing. Excuse me for a moment while I get this right. Um, but yeah, BlindBot's a great place to get all your lettering stuff sorted out. They even have a book they produce. I think Eric Les uh, uh, Weathers really recommended it. It's put out through Image. It's called The Essential Guide to Comic Book Lettering. So everything you really need to know about you know, lettering and stuff like that is in that book. I've got that over on my shelf. I've yet to sit and read through it. Um, but it is, you know, it is there to, uh, kind of learn from. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited about it. Let's just do like a little kid. Right, he's reading. Henry Bemis, welcome, welcome to the nest. Good to see you. Most of the gang's all here, sitting around talking about comics. Who doesn't like that? I can't imagine. You know, there, there's so dang much to talk about in terms of whether it's like you know books you like that you're reading or books that you uh you don't i mean not don't like but i mean why you don't like them things that you miss things that you want to see there's so much of that you know that you you can talk about why the feck would you want to talk about like somebody liked to tweet that called me stupid i can't i can't be uh you know like we can't be 50 50 no mo I hate this person now because they like this tweet that said I uh, I gained a few pounds or something like that. I don't know. They like this tweet that said my book could have used an editor. So now I can't like them anymore. They were a mod. They were a trusted mod. But now they, they don't get to be a mod anymore because because they didn't. They like this. And I put out a, a tweet that said I'm the greatest of all time and they didn't like it. So now bye. Goodbye. Vaughn said, I'm switching over to Clip Studio. I'm retiring Procreate. Ooh, Clip Studio's... Well, no, they're actually on a subscription now. They didn't used to be. You could pay like 250 bucks or something like that to for the license yourself, which thankfully I have here. But um, if I were to like... This computer were to go away or something like that, I would have to... You know, it would only be like like an Adobe-style subscription, and that's that sucks. Um... But it does make it easy to letter. Although I heard there are other really good ways to uh, to do it too. But this is it's kind of just how I letter. I can actually show you. Let me see here. Second. 
I think I did just some quick lettering on one of my pra that practice project that I was telling you about, showing you guys a little bit. I can show you one lettered page. Uh, I didn't letter many of them. I lettered two, I think. Uh, just to kind of give you an idea. There we go. Okay, let's see here. So, yeah, it's all, I, I just, I got it all on one layer. All of that up there. And then there's this one. Once again, I mean, what, every bubble you do will be on a different layer. But I went ahead and I just condensed them all and I flat, you know, like uh, merged all these layers with the letters on them. So it's all, it's all right there. And then if you, if you need to switch something up, you just go on in here and you can switch out the, you know, whatever the, the, uh, well, you gotta, I guess I gotta highlight it, right? And then you can go to like destroy all earth. Actually kind of like that better. Frank, like Gothic, you know, like, um, Cooper Black. That one kind of sucks. Um, you could do dang noisy kids ring, you know, I might actually stick with that. Lowrider is a good one. I like Lowrider. Newsflash. Another good one, but not appropriate here. Um, what did I have? Show card gothic? No. Rockwell. Population zero. Yeah, and then we'll just, maybe we'll just make that a little bit bigger. Call that right there. Okay, I'm not going to save it. So yeah, those are, it's pretty easy. Makes lettering a little bit easier. Of course, there are lots of things that you got to know. Um, but you know, it helps. <laughs> hmm. I think I might've liked it better when this, when this foot was, there we go. Just have him. shoelaces are untied because he can't be bothered to tie his shoelaces. He's reading comic books, for goodness sake. There we go. There. So there's there's that. And then we got we got, we'll have to have a, a teddy of some sort. Marcus Killiger says, one thing that Andy Smith noticed is that the older creators, that's the bros, have a complete story in one book and the younger creators do more introductory books that have cliffhangers. You know, I never really thought about it like that, but you, you very well, well be right. Uh, uh, there, are, there are a lot of creators out there that are, I think, really trying to recreate the glory days or, you know, like of the, the cliffhangers and the monthly books. Uh, not quite understanding that you know, things are far, far different. Um, and they shouldn't be that way. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's the difference between growing up reading Chris Claremont um, um, Wolverine or something like that. And then like some, some graphic novels where you, you get that beginning, the middle and the end. Um which I personally like. I've I've said this a long time. Like, get your get your story, your your characters good. Get that one out so that you can answer your what if. What if I'm good at this? You know, like, get that out, and then uh, if people like it and they respond to it, get it going again. And that is a good observation. Uh, Henry Beavis says I agree. I never really uh, I never really thought about it, but he's 100 percent right. When you look at like what Graham and what Aaron have done. Um, it's a one and done. And Aaron, you know, he tapped on that, that, uh, that um, little epilogue, I think not only to create a little bit of hype, but just to kind of tie his other characters in. So, you know, you kind of see why, what, what they're relevant, you know, about. So, I mean, that's, but, uh, and then our art, I, I'm assuming that that's going to be a one and done. The, um, 
you know, his, his, uh, black and white kind of thing. Um, yeah. He's got his own comic books, right? Bemis says, I sometimes have a problem packing, uh, backing numbered books if I miss the first installments. Amanda's very similar. She, uh, she um, has a hard time going in on something if she can't get that number one. I can't blame her because, I mean, you know, it's like, who are these people? What are they doing? What do they matter? You know, like, there's nothing worse than coming in. Of course, you know, at, younger, we, we probably all had that experience where it's like you pick up an X-Men comic and it's like part three of four. It's in the 200s or the 300s or something like that. You just pick it up and it's like, hey, this is pretty cool. Um, I don't know what's going on, but it's pretty cool. <laughs> I think for newcomers, that's a death gurgle. Uh, you want you want stuff that's um, complete. Perfect. All right. I'm going to go ahead and move these guys toward the bottom here. Maybe to the bottom left. Um, but lately, yeah, Marcus said, I do too. I got Inglorious Rex on the Tampa variant and it was a good in introduction. Yeah, Inglorious Rex, that'd be, uh, that'd be an interesting one to pick up, you know, like the second, the, uh, second issue of like cold. Um, and I don't, I don't know if, if he's got like a, you know, like those, they do those, um paragraphs where they'll say like you know peter parker was a kid that was bit by a spider and now he's spider-man you know sort of thing and then that'll that'll kind of get you caught back up um you gotta get you gotta get the there you go it's out of here shane has to work in it I'm guessing that's on his storytelling. Uh, well, we'll see. You know, the, it's it's really hard to um, judge a first book. I think and that's that's the worst part about crowdfunding and and how CG some CGers are doing things. That first book is often, and I and I, I feel like this is probably the same for Ripperverse as well. Uh, that first book is often set up. You know, like a lot of times the first books aren't great unless it's a reboot like X Men or whatever. Like you know, Jim Lee's X Men legendary to a lot of people but that's got that's already got 20 30 years of, of uh, storytelling behind it to you know they don't need to set stuff up it's you already know who's in who's who's in there um and what they're doing what they're all about um but like it takes a lot to get people or a very skilled artist and writer creators to get people hooked in on on you know like a say a 20 page book to get people to like something off of 48 pages. Now, I think that kind of thing lends itself really well to the um, A4 format because uh, the the European format because they use a lot more panels. You know, they they can they can kind of move things around. They have tiny little teeny panels, 12 page grant panels or 12 panel pages all over the place. Um, a lot more room to tell stories. They don't do as many splash pages though. I noticed that. There are very few splash pages in the books that I've got. Um, it's just a lot of storytelling and a lot of moving things along quickly because you don't have a lot of time. A splash page is a lot of real estate to eat up. Um, you know, so you either have to have more pages or uh, you got to be a darn good storyteller to, uh, you know, be able to do that kind of deconstructed, which is part of our problem too, isn't it? Like you can, you're not getting enough story in your books these days. Um, it's all deconstructed. It's all like, let me see if I can get a pillow back here. Got to have a couple pillows for comfort. So I think lessons are, I'm hoping lessons are being learned because if they're not like, it's, I don't want to say that's not going to hurt us because we've spent lots of time, lots of money um, on these streams and these 
issues, these comics. But, you know, if, if for a company not to learn its lesson, that goes for creators too. If you don't learn, you don't grow, and you don't understand uh, more as you go on, you're not going to make it plain and simple. Henry Vima says, I kind of like when things aren't too polished. It's kind of an indie feel, right? One of the interesting things about the indie crowdfunding scene is watching the creators figure it out as they go along. I agree with that. I, I mean, when, when you find somebody you like and you get to watch them, you know, get better and better and better. Um, that, uh, that can be a special thing, especially if they stick with it, you know, like, like, um, you catch them when they're 20 and you follow them all the way to when they're 45 years old and they're putting out just the most amazing stuff. Um, yeah, I feel like, I feel like Narwhal is gonna, you know, gonna if he sticks with it, he's gonna go that route he's gonna get into his 40s if he's drawn all the time he's drawn those big thick books like that uh his style is going to dramatically change and he's going to be able to take that um that you know real wide sweeping kind of like movement in life that he has in his drawings and he's going to be able to add that anatomy that uh, i've seen him criticized for at times and boy oh boy is that going to be if he keeps with it that's going to be a force to be reckoned with for sure um of course you know if he <laughs> if he decides to go do something else and he gives up on it it's going to feel a little bit like that guy that that quit mining just 20 feet before he hit the gold thinking that, you know, he wasted his whole life and, and it's going to come, you know, of nothing. So I hope he sticks with it. Uh, he's made a lot of people happy already through his, Hey, citizen Ronan, welcome to the, welcome to the nest. Not the same without you. Um, you know, he's, I know he's, he's going to do too well if he keeps, I mean, shoot. I saw that tweet. Mark Miller, Millar likes, uh, likes his work. So, I mean, that's gotta be like a, a strong motivator to keep on, you know, doing what you're doing. Um, there's a lot of people in, in CG, like uh, the Barton brothers. If they keep on going, I could see them like truly getting up to uh, some real classic stuff. Uh, Sontag, he's what on his first book, right? Uh, if he can, if he can, it's speed. I think that, that is part of the problem. Is what he's reading going to be above the fort? That's a good idea. That's a good idea. I like that, Stippling Vaughn. That's a well done idea. Otherwise, I wasn't gonna, but I mean, you know, there's all this negative space up here. Might as well, might as well do something with it. It's a good suggestion. Um, put that down here. And so, what should we have him uh, reading? That's the question now. Wasn't even prepared for that. Comics is hard, Marcus Kilgrew says. Uh, yeah, they are. It, it, it's comics are such a deceptively simple thing. You know, a lot of people think like I could do that, especially when they see somebody that's got like a really easy style. Like, um, like uh, you know, you take Bruce Tim is a great example. He uh, he's got a style that's fairly simple. I mean, you look at it and it's it the line work is clean but it's not rendered. It's fairly shapey. And you look at that and you, so many people just think, oh, I can do that. And they try and you can always tell A, that it is a Bruce Tim copy and B, it is a bad Bruce Tim copy because there's just something about, you know, how he draws. Same with Darwin Cook, same with Bill Willing, or not Bill Willingham, uh, uh, Bill Watterson. Um, same with uh, Jeff Smith. These guys are cartoonists and they... You know, like Bone, you know, he can get him with some practice. But, I mean, just trying to draw just by yourself, it's deceptively tough. Knowing, you know, how big to make the shapes and stuff like that. Um, so, I mean, <laughs> let's do a little rendering here. There we go. I don't mind saying that that 
And I wanted to thank you, Citizen Ronan, for uh, the nomination the other night. That was truly a moment that caught me off guard. Um, oh, Stippling Bond says, Dear Lord, I might buy uh, more books if these mainstream hacks at least tried to mimic a successful style. Yeah, but I really like it when they, you know, they come in with their own stuff. Um, I, I, you know, Jim, I mean, everybody was doing Jim Lee. I, I remember hearing, I can't remember who it was. Was it uh, Ian Churchill? He's a guy that, um, if you've seen his work, Ian Churchill looks a lot like Jim Lee, but not quite. You know, he draws his he draws his torsos a little bit longer and whatnot. And there was a point, I guess, it was during Loeb's Hulk run that uh, Churchill had hurt his wrist, hurt his hand, something like that. And he asked if he could just kind of go in his cartoony style. And his cartoony style... One second. Let me see if I can find this. Show you what I'm talking about. Uh, his cartoony style is... Uh, I love it. But I mean, for a while, he was just kind of a Jim Lee clone. And that's what they wanted from him. Um, sort of a Jim Lee by way of... Uh, by way of uh, like a Wild Storm type look, I guess. Let me see if I can grab a couple of these shots of his and you'll kind of see he had a book called oh I don't remember what it was called it was uh oh um uh, it was like an Aquaman book but it was it was uh I'll show you I'll find it oh uh it was um okay I'll just grab the picture of the book here for you okay Okay, so, so here we go. This is the uh, kind of Jim Lee style that the dude was working. Right? So this is Ian Churchill doing kind of his Jim Lee-ish style. Okay, with me so far? And then we've got Ian Churchill doing his kind of cartoonish style for the Hulk. Right? This is when he asks, hey, can I just do my style? Not the Jim Lee style because, you know, my wrist can't take all the rendering or arm or whatever happened to him. Okay, so I like this better. Now, Ian Churchill, Churchill doing his own um, kind of thing turns out like this. <laughs> Very cartoony. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of guys, I think, in the mainstream that can do different stuff kind of reminds me of Donald Delay just a little tiny bit um but it's the editors and people going in there saying uh I want who's real popular right now Jim Lee's real popular um let's I want him dry draw like him you know <laughs> and uh and then they have to to get work it's frustrating because you know you, you wouldn't get like your Sam Keith's or your or those those uh, Scotty Youngs and stuff like that. If everybody just had to draw like the one popular artist, Marcus Kilger says I try to emulate John Buscema and Jack Kirby, Kirby, but it not quite. It's not quite right. And Jack Kirby's another one that everyone's like oh, I could draw like Jack Kirby, and then they do it, and it, it's always like that's a bad drawing of a Jack Kirby style. Uh, Citizen Rona says I never tried to emulate anyone. I always just took technique and then decide what works for me. So I take bits and pieces. I think you know if you. If you sit and read these characters and you take stuff in, eventually it will probably, because you're used to looking at it, it will probably, you'll notice stuff about the art. Um, and it'll it'll just kind of seep in. Uh, Henry Bemis says, I used to buy anything from Tim Vigil and to Hernandez Bros to uh, Daniel Klaus back in the day. I'm just a fan of comic art in general. And, and we like that kind of thing, Henry Bemis. Love having you around. Love hearing your input on stuff like that. Yeah, Marcus Kilgore says, actually, I just draw. Boom. Slap that page down on that table. Yeah, that's, that's kind of been me too. I mean, there, for, for a little while, I tried to draw. It was almost frustrating for me. Like, I would try to draw, like, um, for that reason, how to draw comics the Marvel way. It actually pushed me away from drawing because I would try to draw, like, John Buscema, and it always looked like trash. So it, it was hard... I see what he's doing now that I know more and I was an idiot for not doing it like that. But, um, but, uh, 
I, I wanted, you know, like my picture to look like the picture in the book. That was a sign of success. That, that shouldn't have been. It was the fundamentals I was after. Um, but I didn't really think of it like that. I was just like, okay, you need to draw like this. And so I simpled it up. My, my thing was, I think I, I went back to fundamentals. I went back to basics and I made my art a bit simpler. And then I could build from there. Had to start with like basically stick figures and then move on from there. And then, you know, you can get, you can get, you know, a little bit different styles if you need to if you're i draw by shapes you know and stuff but um let's see what, what should we do here what's he what's he drawing what's he reading bemis says that's why bancroft's art contest was so cool there's so many different styles yeah i did uh what was the uh, prize for that i i wonder like i know um Shane and them, when they did it, they'd do, like, some cash stuff. Um, and then, like, reprint and stuff like that. But um, maybe some... And I think Ripa had, like... Uh, he'd send you a book with some swag bag type stuff. Oh, 500 bucks. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I don't usually get involved in those things. Um, there's plenty of other people that can... That can do that sort of deal. I'm happy to let them try. Uh, if I feel like drawing a character, I will draw a character. That's kind of a funny thing about me. I started, you know, around here drawing people, which I'm terrible at drawing people. And that was my, my prescription to practice and other people's characters, which it was fun. But if I'm real honest, I don't care to draw a lot of other people's characters. Oh, uh, Vanessa says it was uh, it was $50 million dues. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> Bancroft had a significant cash prize for the top three. Okay. Yeah, I uh, I really like drawing situations. I like drawing interesting people. Sometimes monsters, although I haven't done that in a long time. But something about something about um, Norman Rockwell's ability to get an entire sequence of stuff going in just one picture fascinated me. I had to capture that. Um, Far side. Eric Larson, or no, Gary Larson could do kind of the same thing. Um, and that was always really impressive to me. I think that's where I started to push my art. And just just comic strips in general, being able to get an entire idea into just four panels uh, was a good challenge. It was a fun challenge. Um, let's see here. I got an idea. There we go. It's in trouble now. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, says Sarona says cartooning is deceptively simple. You are right there. Everybody thinks they can do it. I bet there are more failed comic strips than probably any other form of illustration. Um, Marcus says it was fun. Henry and Citizen Ronan should have won. <laughs> That's nice. Uh, Citizen Ronan and I did the Wraith of God art contest. Yeah, I remember. Oh, yeah, Aaron did have that. He put like, um, he put the, uh, the winner on the back of the book. Is that right? Like, Oh, cool. Let's see here. Um, all right, buddy, being all friendly and nice in the chat. I like seeing that. Um, and I hope that's how it is this Saturday. You know, like people are just having fun, not taking it super seriously. I, uh, I know I won't be. Because I will be voting, especially in Entertainer of the Year. For Kelsey Shannon, probably. Not to give up my vote, but 
I think he's been he's been banging it on just hitting all cylinders lately. Like his interviews, just him going on the show, just from the the music he's been choosing to uh, graybeards and and just the humor. And I I was killing. He's killing it now that he's streaming a little bit more. He's killing it. But what a what a great uh, roster of of people in that category in all the categories really i was i was really excited to see everybody nominated and there were a few that like you know not i don't know if they were first i don't know if ally was a first time um in there she seemed surprised there are a few people that were like really excited to to be nominated oh, i was i floated on cloud nine all day i was like holy crap Somebody actually pulled the trigger. I tried to get out of it. <laughs> yeah, Sister Rona says, we won't let anybody ruin our evening. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> Henry Beam says, I'd like to point out that I saved the day by nominating Kenneth for best creator at the last second. No, the you know, we... I know Vanessa's not taking any... Uh, any any more uh you know nominations but i think the hero award at least for this channel here the hero award goes out to you henry it's a fictional award but i mean I, at least i can say it like you you save a man uh vanessa's blood pressure <laughs> i think everybody would have been in trouble for that uh <laughs> jim cox has 10 more categories oh that would have only added another what <laughs> three hours to the proceedings of trying to figure out a, oh my gosh but i will say i was really glad to see the chat was like really in it they were taking it seriously they were uh they were participating not like the rules meeting but uh yeah i know it's so hard because like you you really want to you know you really a big fan of like certain creators over everybody else and you want them to win but you've got to um, you've got to follow the rules. You got to uh, you know you got to make it fair enough. Otherwise, it really is just a farce. You might as well just yeah, just name it the Roca Ford Awards. You might as well yeah, just take that one day and honor whoever it is is your very favorite. Just just shower him embarrassingly with or her with all the uh, um. Hey, Angela Curry. Holy kitty cats. Look at that. Welcome to the nest. I don't know. Have you ever been here before? Well, if you haven't, welcome in. If you have, welcome in. It's great to see you. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so this, the rules meeting was boring. Uh, you know, I, I kind of like the fact that it, that the chat was included in the rules meeting. You know, like, I uh, it didn't have to. We could have sat back and just said okay here here are the rules for the whole thing and just kind of figured it out amongst ourselves but true to the chat you guys were included um what's happening hey uh well angela we're doing a, another prompt stream like most of the random draw streams and this particular prompt is blanket fort suggested by amanda um and you uh oh, she's she likes holy kitty cats it's been a catchphrase of mine for a long time and i'm a dog person which is kind of funny uh the other one you missed was um snow by Piper. Uh, Piper suggested snow, and that's what we got out of it. And um, this one is Blanket Fort. This one's <laughs> by uh, by Amanda She's suggesting this. I think the shoulders actually need a little bit more life to him. She's like really, really annoyed. The kid's still up. Amanda! <laughs> Amanda, who is not here. Yeah, she'll have to watch the replay. And... Uh,
I'm back. The uh, rain seems to have knocked out the internet for just a few seconds. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, what did I miss? <laughs> what did I miss? The boring stuff is Vanessa's secret weapon. The haters don't have the attention span to stick around. Well, might not be wrong. Might not be sharing. Um, I don't know whether to hurt a beyond or Michael or Vanessa. So I found it interesting. If I were just in the chat, I'd stay for the whole thing. The bird is down again, but I got back up. I'm running. I'm like serpentining around. They can't catch me. Oh, no. Boomer. Boomer. No, it was. it's raining out, so it, like, it, it weakened my internet temporarily. The cats didn't get me. I got out of the way. Dang it. And yes, we can feed the ducks. No, this is into space. That's the one we're doing. We're doing into space. Right. No, you didn't break it, Angela. We're happy to have you here. It's an honor. Trust me. She said, oh, that darn UK realtor. He's out of the game. Yeah, we fixed him, though. Poor stat. We knew him well. He's back. He's back from the dead. Um, let's see, Angela. <laughs> did you stream with... Okay, so he's taking that. Uh, let's go to that. Uh, what kind of internet do I have? Uh, it's just kind of your regular... It's not fiber optic. It's just kind of your regular stuff. What am I under... I don't even remember the provider right now. But yeah, it's... it's We're kind of out in the country, so we've got some decent internet for that, but it's not. It's in no way, like, fast internet. Yeah. Hey, it's raining where Angela is, too. Um, which is real surprising. I mean, just as far as rain goes, it's real surprising. Usually we got snow about this time, but it looks like this week there's going to be two other days of rain. So, you know, I guess that's that. We'll take it. Let's see, legs. She's got dark pants on. So, hopefully, it's Roadrunner Internet. Stay on, Brandberg. Yeah, no, not quite. It's uh, it's not Century Link. It's not. I don't remember who it is. It's um, one second. Let me just. Take this screen off for a second, and I'll, I'll just have a look. Oh, yeah, it is CenturyLink. We're with CenturyLink. That's who we're with. Um, and it's been okay so far. Not amazing. I wouldn't give it a 10 out of 10, but it's the only provider that's out here. So, so we'll just deal with it. There we go. Frustrated. The kids should be asleep. DSL, yeah, I think so. Whatever it is. The only thing that comes out here. Citizen Rona says this. YouTube keeps suggesting videos that I've never even looked for, like on bass. Or bass. Bass bass fishing. I don't play bass. Interesting. Next Hellwalkie. That's usually all right. It's it's although I have to say that if I were ever to put my face on camera. Uh, that would probably like slow it down considerably, but you know what? I feel like if I put my face on camera, it would be that, like that situation, like, um, Spider-Man two, you know, where they're like, that's it. That's what he looks like. We can go, uh, a Starlink. Isn't that where they put the chip in your brain? I don't want that. I don't want none of that. Cyborg stat. I mean, I, despite what the, what the avatar is telling you. I don't want that. <laughs> Stat has trouble with words, too. Yeah. Vanessa pronounces stuff wrong. I trip over my words quite a bit. Words are hard. It's true. <laughs> All right. So let's see. We'll keep this one a pencil. I'm kind of liking the pencil look. Pencil with some watercolor. So what do we do here? We'll go, we'll go yellow. Just hit that. Oh, this, yeah, bright yellow. And brown. Uh, yeah, I think that maybe that's why I'm. See the bird, kill the illusion. No, it's it's true. Oh, thanks, sister. Ronan the Strong is great, he says. Um, 
but uh, yeah, I, I feel like it wouldn't be like a gimmick killer, but uh, I think it would just be like, what would you call it? Like uh, anticlimactic. If I were to, to go on screen, I, I, there's not a whole lot for anyone to gain other than to just go, wow, you look different than I thought. <laughs> really? I mean, if you're really thinking about it. It's one of those deals where, and I almost wish, I almost wish that, um, you know, more CG kind of like, you know, you get your like your debates and stuff like that. I almost wish that they would do it with just kind of avatars because it's it's the words that we're kind of concerned with. Although I suppose you have to, you know, make sure that they are uh, they're not like looking at stuff and like, you know, doing stuff to kind of screw each other over. But it's it's really the words that um, matter. Angela Curry says, if you don't have a bird face, I'm going to be disappointed. You know what? Actually, I was talking to my wife about this. Let me let me just kind of illustrate, show you what I mean. If I were to ever go on camera, I think what I would have to do is get myself a hat. We're just talking like a white hat. Right? Like that. And I would have to, you know, there's they're just those basic kind like that. What I have to do is I have to dye the bill orange so we're talking like this and right? just a quick quick thing like that dye the bill orange and then i'd have to get like some f fabric paint or whatever like that and maybe maybe like that and then she 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 suggested i get some feathers and put them like that and wear this hat right so it would have to be <laughs> i would have to wear this hat like that right this would have to be the statistical zero hat i think if I don't have a bird face, she's going to be disappointed. Oh, Marcus, one of my uh, managers, kind of lives out there. He's still got Starlink. He likes it. Oh. Uh, hats? That's a that's by Bit Thief. That's your <laughs> sponsors. Hats? That's my bit. There's an owl hat on Amazon. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I feel like this this would have to be like my my brand hat. Because, you know, I think if I wore this hat, people would take me seriously, right? I would probably get nominated for absolutely every category for this hat. It's like, did he letter anything? No, but he's got this hat, so he's going to get entered in there. That's pro <laughs> Yeah, Michael DJ says, you got to have a funny hat, guzzle a bottle of wine, and pass out on stream. I could manage some of that. I mean, I could, I, I could drink a root beer. Right? Because who doesn't like root beer? You know, I kind of wonder, like, do they have root beer bars? Have you ever seen one of those? Like a bar that's, it's just different kinds of pop or root beer or whatever like that. And and you can just sit there and order it just like a real, a real bar and just drink your root beer, your sarsaparilla. Maybe they got different kinds of like stuff in them, like root beer with like cherry, vanilla. Or, well, I guess it's always got vanilla, doesn't it? But, but, um. I kind of wonder about that. You ever see that? Seems interesting to me. But I guess then again, that's what a coffee shop is. Like, that's basically a non-alcoholic bar. Coffee shop. Uh, let's see, Ella, isn't root beer what Richie Cunningham from Happy Days drank? Yeah, well, that's kind of the drink of kings, isn't it? Uh, Vanessa's this bar, I thought you were talking about a candy bar. Or, you know, like like an actual bar. Uh, oh, this is Angela says, so Stats an owl? I thought he was a hawk. No, no, no. See, I am all birds. My grandfather was an owl. I am... It can be whatever bird, I guess. I don't know. I think I wanted to say I started out as a parrot. But then it turned into like a... Many, many different. That's a mic. 
microaggression. <laughs> no, <laughs> leave her be. <laughs> uh, the uh, drugstore soda counter. Yep. Death of my liver is not worth a night's entertainment for a few bucks, right? That's true. I used to order Shirley Temples at the bar when I was little. Shirley Temples. Wonder what is that? What's in that drink? Like, I don't know anything about drinks. Just realizing that now. I never actually had a drink before, like an alcoholic drink. Not once. Never really occurred to me to do it. Yeah. I yeah, that's a that's a part of our life my life we don't really talk about anymore. Uh Vaughn. I'm 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 just trying to I'm just trying to make up for it by being good to people, entertaining people, drawing for people. I think that's just my lot in life here. You know, just sit and draw for people. Ginger ale and a cherry spritz. Is that right? That sounds actually kind of good. I think it's ginger ale and, and uh, yeah, I, I do like ginger ale. I haven't actually had, I haven't had pop in two years, but it sounds really good. I gave it up. I had to give it up. I said, you know what? I'm gonna do this for my health. My blood pressure was starting to get a little high, and I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give up salt and sugar from the pop and whatnot. Switched over to that not so great sparkling water, and that's kind of where I've been home base for two years. Because you know, I mean, yeah, I work out, but when you're an artist, you got a lot of sedentary lifestyle kind of, kind of things going. You got to look out for that, right? Yeah, okay, so let's see. Oh, thought it was a sprite. I swear this whole day is out to get me. <laughs> but thanks for sticking around, guys. <laughs> Bird's wings are getting clipped again. I've been fighting for my life over here. Uh, we have a bird down. I gotta finish this thing quick. So we can get out of here. You guys can go and tell the tale of the... The, uh... Bird that twice dodged death. <laughs> my goodness. Okay, we're getting close. Hour and forty. I'm just trying to use up some of the uh, the time that 
that I've got left here. The uh, two hours and 40 minutes. I'm trying to just use that because... Oh, no, this... Oh, God, dang it. And I was doing it on the wrong layer. Benjamin Curry says, hit the lick. That's very kind of you. All right, so... I was doing it on the wrong layer this whole time. You believe that? That's why I was looking like, I was like, why are those pencils looking like garbage? But now we know. All right. Got to do a different blue for this. There we go. A little purplish blue. Kind of put her in the, the nighttime. You never know what's going to happen here on this channel. Um, whether I'm going to be fighting for my life to stream with you guys or whether we're just, nothing's going to happen and I'll just quietly draw and sit over here in the corner and just be humbled humbled by this internet <laughs> oh well you guys got your uh you guys got your predictions ready for for next uh week kind of figure through the lists and decide who you think see now there's a fine line between who's going to win and who you think is going to win right the tension is was palpable. Yeah, me too. I'm sitting there like, go, 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 go. Come back, come back, come back. And and then it does. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to get through this. Hopefully we'll be able to get through this <laughs> before it cuts out again. And if it does, if it does, you guys, absolutely. Don't waste your night waiting for me, guys. <laughs> Although that was touching. Y'all still sitting here when I get back, smiling about that. Ha ah, ha, he screwed up. My prediction, pain, Mr. T. That reminds me of uh, Mr. Robinson's Neighborhood, Eddie Murphy. Do you remember that, Saturday Night Live, when uh, Mr. T was the landlord? And he's all like, oh, it's the landlord, boys and girls. Who is it? He's like, over the door. Hello, got a new song today. It's pain. The winner is porn bots. No. <laughs> oh, shoot. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> porn bots. I haven't seen them around lately. I see a lot of them on, uh, on, on uh, X, you know, because it's just bot city over there. Not just porn bots, just all kinds of bots, but... The AI stuff is probably not really helping. You know what I mean? Beavis said, I always thought the bird's worst enemy was cats and kids with DB guns. Turns out it's spotty internet. You know, you learn something new every day. And I feel like this particular show is more... Uh, educational to a bird's habitat in life than David Attenborough himself would be sitting there. And yes, the bird is sitting there with his internet going. Nothing is trying to kill him yet. I mean, yet. Kinetic graciously sends me Russian women on. <laughs> that's, that's real nice of him. <laughs> oh, shoot. Kitty, hello. Welcome to the nest. Welcome to the nest. We've got 11 people watching right now. That's pretty darn good for me. At Attenborough was spot on. I'm sure, I'm sure there's better. <laughs> I you know, I I before they they really got into the climate change type stuff, I really like those. I've got the first two. What do I got? Like uh Planet Earth one and two. Frozen Planet, and then uh, Blue Planet 1 and 2. I like those, especially if you put it on a projector. Holy crap, it's unreal how cool that is. Um, and there's some crazy, crazy footage in there. There's, I'll never forget in the second one, in the second uh, Planet Earth, where it's just like, a leopard goes in and comes out with a caiman. And you're just like, holy crap, he pulled a friggin' giant lizard gator <laughs> from, the, from the water. Um interesting stuff and, and great reference for animals too do you know if birds have colons my roommate says they 
don't I don't believe they do. I think they've got like the I think they've got the uh, the gizzard thing that filters stuff out. Not that I am a bird expert, mind you, but um, but I do not believe so. Some birds might be different, but uh, yeah, that would probably be it. <laughs> Where's the question? Maybe it's because the internet is trying to screw me tonight. That's God oh, dang it. Watery brush. That's what I want. Lighten this up a little bit. <laughs> okay. So, what do we want? We want like a... Let's get like a, let's see, blue. Let's do a... Kind of a red floor. Yeah, we'll just do a quick, quick red floor here. Getting on, and the internet's trying to kill me, so we gotta speed this up. Yeah, you know what? I don't. I, I think I like the framing here without said red, like that. <laughs> Currently googling dwarf birds. <laughs> don't put that in your search history. Be put on a list. <laughs> We've all been in this situation, right? You just kind of like get under the bed with a flashlight or something like that, and you're supposed to be sleeping. Yo, no. gonna stay up. All right, let's let's just get like a. Erase that in a second. Now I gotta do the whole thing at once. I used to sneak downstairs. You know what? I did too. Um, hey, Stipple Von Night, guys. See you all in the chat somewhere soon. Good night. Have a great rest. Gotta make coffee for the morning. See you later, uh, Marcus Killigrew. If you're not back, I'll be probably pretty close to being done pretty soon here. Uh, yeah, I used to walk through the house completely dark and, you know, turn the TV on real silent so that nobody knew. Um, and I would just sit and watch TV. Nobody could stop me. My parents were either tasked with, like, staying up to guard me or going and actually getting some sleep because I, uh, I was a nighttime kid. I was up at night constantly. Uh... Too late. Turns out they use the cloaca and the colon for the uh, reabsorption of water from the GI tract. Yes, yes. Sounds about right. I use my phone. The chat goes everywhere. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. You know, I, sometimes I think that I should be putting a lot more into this show and like doing, um, you know, different segments and having all kinds of crazy reaction videos and you know what i can show you let me just uh pop this down i'll i'll bring up what i was working on i'm not even sure if i'm going to use it but this is the kind of like where my mind goes thought process wise so you know i was talking about about how uh I wanted to kind of give this atmosphere for this show of just kind of like cheers, like a bar where you come in and, and everybody goes like, Hey, you know, and there, there are people come in and stuff like that. And I thought about actually, uh, putting this to like a crowd cheer or something like that. So when people came in, right, you'd, you'd be like, Henry Beavis. And then you'd hit this and be like, Hey, how's it going? Welcome to the nest. Um, but I don't know. <laughs> it feels like a stupid idea, and I don't know if I'm going to finish it. But it made me laugh while I was drawing it. 
Uh. <laughs> okay, so that's let's cut that back out. Get back to the drawing. Um, Citizen Rona says e fapping is all the rage right now. Um, hey, when will we get a Stippling Vaughn book? No pressure. That's a good question. Um, but uh, yeah, that was that was something. My wife walks in and she sees me drawing this bar full of birds, and she just kind of like. Huh? <laughs> Walks back out. She's learned. She's learned not to not to question this. <laughs> um, but I don't know if I'm gonna use it because I mean, you get that point where you got like a bunch of people. I suppose I could get them all in groups, like this person, this person, this person, yay, or something. But kind of stops the show dead when you get somebody in like 30, 40 minutes, and then you gotta hey, yay. But what happens when you get like three hundred people in, like? <laughs> He's finally lost at the wipe. No, you know, I think I think most wives of geeks, they just kind of they just kind of get it to where it's like I'm not gonna ask. <laughs> you um you ask Graham or you ask uh I bet Billy or Graham, both of them will be able to tell you like they, it just gets to be a point where it's like no, nah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna ask. I don't wanna know. <laughs> that's 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 a geek's wife usually. He's finally lost it, yes. And I reap all the benefits. No. She's just gonna listen to me talk comics for an hour again while she looks at her phone and goes, Oh, yeah, crazy. No. She's always She's always listening. She knows quite a bit about the stuff against her will. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I think, you know what? I'll keep that. What, i got to get back into the... Uh, i got to do a little erasing here. Get rid of this. That'll fix that. Let's get rid of... Clean this up just a little bit, mind you. Yeah, that's pretty good. Oh, oh. Billy's wife is up for sainthood, Citizen Ronan says. He's just a big kid. Oh, it's so funny seeing uh I, I can't I can't tell you how many times I've gotten a laugh out of like him saying something and then her turning and going, What's wrong with you? And they go, What? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> it's kind of what I say. Makes me laugh. Ah, but you can tell they love each other and they've stuck by each other through a lot. And I really like seeing that. Same with Aaron and Shelly. It's inspirational, if you ask me. Aaron tells the story that Shelly's first comic she read was Red Guy. She said something like that. She didn't really pay attention to a lot of the comics. And then she read it and she started to really get into it. So she started looking for other CG books to read. Now, that's what I'm talking about. That's how you get get some, some new blood in here. I love seeing it. I love I did that. comics are for anybody at any age, and and that's that's a testament. All right, so I think we're gonna call this one right here before the internet cuts out on me again. I did it. I just got twenty minutes left in uh, in the streamyard bank, and tomorrow it all resets. Twenty more hours. Ha ha. Don't go letting go go into waste. You know that's like a, a metaphor for life. You know you want to you want to use all you can and live, but don't live too dang hard because you know sometimes you end up crashing and burning. Looks great. Thank you very much. All right, guys. Um, I should be back tomorrow. Probably be an afternoon stream. I'm thinking two to three o'clock somewhere around there if the uh, clock is reset, so I could say hi to. Anybody that's lurking around at that point in time, I'll give the mom a glasses like Amanda. We can, we can give her some glasses. What the heck? Uh, before we go. Oh, that's ink, yo. Let's see here. We'll just give her some. Angela says, I love it. Do you stream whenever? Uh, typically... On Mondays and Thursdays, I stream in the afternoons. Anywhere from 12 to 3, I start. And that's usually just to be able to say hi to people that are uh, in the UK. Because, you know, I've got a decent amount of people that know me in the UK or, you know, um, 
over in, in Europe there. And then Sundays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Friday, Saturday. That's usually not Saturday. I stream at the chat on Saturday. But um, the other days, that's usually like a, a somewhere between 8, a start time of 8 to 10. Um, so that I can say hi to people that, you know, can't, they're, they're working during, you know, two o'clock in the afternoon and central time. So it's like, it's like three, uh, Eastern and so on and so forth, forth back. Yeah. I try to move around a little bit so I can say hi to different people. Um, cause they can't always make it. And I don't want to like, just sit on a, uh, a specific time and, you know, people that can't make that just have to sit with the replay. Thanks for asking. Uh, Bemis says, I miss my fellow Arsenal fan, Charlie's London. Haven't seen her much. I see her on Twitter. Haven't, she, I know she's, she's, you know, she's done some moving and whatnot. Um, so she's, she's pretty busy, but she's still around. Yeah. I, I still, uh, like a post from her and, and yeah, and every once in a while, but I believe they are pretty dang busy. Um, so let's, oh yeah, we're going to draw some glasses. Some quick ones. Give her like a squint. There we go. Eyebrows getting a little lost in there, but that's okay. The hairline will be will act like the eyebrow. Not unlike the eyebrow. There we go. And then I gotta erase this quick so that it gives her a little bit more of a waist back there. Yeah, she's mad. She's like, you go to bed. Uh, her Tim Sheridan tweet was on point. Yeah, I think she got blocked for that. Sign of a sign of a good one, I guess. <laughs> All right. So yeah, there we go. So uh, what do we got? We got uh, snow from Piper and blanket fort from Amanda B for tonight. Thank you very much for joining everybody. Uh, glad to have another conversation with you. It's always fun talking comics and whatnot in our corner of this wonderful fandom um have a great rest of your nights see you when i see you next whenever that is on this here random draw stream mm -hmm.